Hi, my name is Marika and I am the Animal Programs Director at McDowell's Environmental Center. And today we are hanging out with our black vulture and we are actually gonna be going on a walk with him um, to answer any questions that you might have and to tell you a little bit more about why these birds are so awesome and so important. Our black vulture came to us in 2017 from the Alabama Wildlife Center and he was actually picked up out of the wild when he was just a little baby. And so the first face that he saw and that he truly recognized was a person's face. And so he is what is called an imprint. And that means that he imprinted on people and he does not think that he is a black vulture. And so he thinks he's a person. And so um, he was actually found in someone's basement and um, he was taken to the Alabama Wildlife Center and now he is here with us and he cannot live his life out in the wild anymore because he would just follow people around and want to hang out with them instead of going and flying and soaring with other black vultures, which is pretty cool and interesting. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later, but I think now we're going to take him for a little walk, um, which is really fun and exciting. And he seems to be ready to go as well. So we'll go ahead and let him out. All right, in um, these enclosures that the birds are living in are called mews, and so this is um, Vulture's little home. And so we'll go ahead and let him out so we can go on a walk. You all might be wondering why we are taking our black vulture on a walk. Well, black vultures are actually very social creatures out in the wild. So they tend to live in other groups with other black vultures. You might go outside of your house or on a walk maybe, and you might look up in the sky and see a couple soaring figures maybe circling up in the sky. And those could be black vultures. They tend to live with other vultures to help them survive and be in community. So as Marika said in the beginning, our black vulture is an imprint. And that is um, because of that, it relies on us to be that socialization because it cannot rely on the other black vultures. So that's a little bit about why we hang out with our black vulture is to keep that socialization and it's part of his development and keeping him happy and healthy in our care. Um, like Hannah said, um, black vultures are extremely social animals, and so out in the wild they use that socialization to their advantage, and they will actually hang out and look out for turkey vultures who are the first ones to dead animals, which is also called carrion. And so turkey vultures have a sense of smell, whereas black vultures don't have a sense of smell at all, and so they will use their awesome eyesight to spot turkey vultures to guide them to that dead animal. And um, black vultures will also come to that dead animal and they, in their group, will fight off turkey vultures from that dead um, carcass, which is pretty incredible and awesome that they use their community in order to find food and kind of take it from others, um, which is pretty incredible. Um, those of you who tuned in um, when I was talking about our great horned owl, there actually are some differences between the great horned owl and the black vulture. Um, some people um, don't really consider vultures um, birds of prey at all or um, raptors. And the reason for that is they are eating dead stuff like we've talked about and they're not really having to hunt for their prey. So therefore they don't have those sharp talons like the great horned owl had feature um, that black vultures have is they have that sharp hooked beak that um, doesn't really assist them in capturing prey because they don't need to do that but it helps them to really rip and grip apart 
their food. Um, since their food is already dead, um, for black vultures, there might be a bunch of them that land on that dead animal. And so that beak is really helping them rip pieces apart and eating it very quickly. He can eat his food so quickly. Um, and sometimes he um, gobbles it up a lot faster than you would expect. Um, he can probably do it in like less than five seconds, which is pretty incredible. And so that beak is really helping them to do that. So our black vulture's wingspan is six feet, and that's how far away you should be standing from people. So you can just kind of imagine that, that when you're standing six feet away from someone, that is how wide our vulture's wingspan is. Um, he also weighs around four pounds. So some interesting things about him. So y'all might have noticed that we have been dipping down with our gloves and feeding vulture a little bit. So what is inside of our gloves is we have a little bit cut up pieces of dead rat and dead mouse. Um, as Mirka mentioned before, they eat dead animals out in the wild. So that is also what we feed it in our care. And we cut it up and we feed it to him while he's walking and also while we fly him, which you all might get to see in just a minute. All right, what we're about to do next is we are going to do some training and some exercise with him. And so Hannah and myself are going to be flying him back and forth between the two of us. And to do that, we are using a very simple cue of lifting up our arm. And that is his signal that we have a piece of food for him. And then Hannah is going to do the exact same thing. And she is going to lift up her arm and the vulture is going to jump on her arm and we are going to fly him back and forth between the two of us and this helps him with that social interaction that he needs in order to be happy and also helps him to get a little bit of exercise because he still has that full ability to fly and so this helps him to get a little bit of that energy out and one cool thing that you might notice when he is flying um, black vultures, when you see them up high in the sky, they will have white just on the fingertips of their feathers. Um, black vultures are um, the ones that have those, and turkey vultures will have um, complete silverish white on their underwings. And so if you see a vulture flying high in the sky, you might be able to tell the difference between those two features. All right, one last thing that I wanna to mention to you guys who are viewing out there. Um, he was picked up out of the wild when he was a baby. And if you see a baby animal that's out in the wild, you might think that it needs help. Um, but in actuality, that baby animal is probably all right. And its parents are probably nearby watching it and taking care of it. And so if you do see a baby animal out in the wild, the best thing that you can do for that baby animal is to just leave it be. If you are concerned about it though, you can contact a wildlife rehabilitation center and they'll be able to tell you exactly what you can do in order to help that baby animal out. But the best thing for you to do is watch it from a distance, don't touch it, and you can observe and learn a lot from that baby animal um, by staying far away from it. And so that's something that you guys can do at home um, to make sure that these guys live their life um, out in the wild where they should be. Come on. It comes up and like snatches the camera. <laughs> 